Please use the link below to get the notes, questions and other videos. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share to others for our daily new videos. So today we're going to look at the importance of meiosis, non-disjunction, how does non-disjunction bring about Down syndrome. And then we wrap up with this topic and then we can start the topic of reproduction in vertebrates so that yeah, the other time we come back we can start uh, reproduction in human or what you call human reproduction. All right importance of meiosis before we start the importance of meiosis don't forget that meiosis is the process whereby one cell divide uh, to form four daughter cells and each cell has half the chromosome number to the parent it means that the cells which are being formed under meiosis are uh, different so and then we we say that meiosis results in haploid cells and these cells are specifically for gametes based on that information we can identify some of the importance of meiosis so what are some of the importance of meiosis the first one is the production of haploid gametes when we talk about the gametes we say that gametes these are sperms and ova so these sperms are haploid it means that if they are diploid if the body cell is diploid it has 46 chromosomes now the gametes they are going to have 23 chromosomes if it is a human cell so number two is halving effect of the meiosis overcomes the doubling effect how is this halving effect being brought about when you talk about halving effect remember uh, remember that, that that we we started with the uh you start with uh 46 chromosome this 46 chromosome they divide and when they divide you form uh, one cell, another cell, and then this one also divide, you form another cell, another cell. And we want to explain the effect, this issue of having effect. Now, this is 23, this is 23, this is 23, this is 23. So now, it means that the sperms or ova which are being formed here, they are going to be, uh, they are going to be 23. Now, if you bring about, um, if you bring about, for example, a sperm, uh fuses or fertilizes the ovum the ovum and then these are gametes remember then it means that this is 23 and also this is 23 so now when they fuse during the process of fertilization now you go back to 46 so it means that this is fusion this is fertilization so this is the doubling effect this and this they double to form 46 but now meiosis is going to divide them now to form 23 23 that's why here they are saying that the halving effect this halving effect this halving effect is being outcome by um by the what the doubling effect of fertilization so this is fertilization while well, this is meiosis so it means that this helps us to keep uh the, the the number of chromosomes in one generation to the next generation constant but if this halving effect was not there it means that if fertilization occurs now it would have been now 46 46 and then you form another one which is 92 then 92 again it, uh, 92 92 uh, again you, you form a big number so this halving effect this um doubling effect is being outcome uh, by doubling effect the halving effect out um overcomes the doubling effect of fertilization so meiosis results in reducing the chromosome number so we're saying that thus maintaining the constant number of chromosomes uh from one generation to the next generation so now uh we are saying that um this produces number two uh, another thing is um it produces what you call the uh, genetic variation remember in 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 in, in prophase one remember in prophase pro uh phase prophase one you have a process called the crossing crossing over this crossing over it helps in in exchange of genetic material so because there is exchange of genetic material then they, they will have different sperms uh we know that you produce over 300 million sperms for uh, per, per a single ejaculation so each sperm is different this as a result of prophase during the prophase uh in the process called crossing over so it brings about new recombinants new combination of genetic material 
um we are different from our sisters and brothers is because of basically uh because of the process of crossing over why is meiosis important for survival do we need uh this meiosis for survival or do organisms which don't undergo meiosis uh survive uh we need to this meiosis so that we can create differences among individuals of the same species if these organisms are known are, are the same then automatically it means that there won't be differences imagine i i asked you a, a question last time that if everyone is rich what will happen if there is there are no differences among us if everyone is clever you don't need to read everyone has the information it, it means that there will be no competition so the, the reason why meiosis is there to bring about the differences among organisms of the same species you can survive in hot environment you can survive in in cold environment you can survive uh, and other ones who survives in hot environment can't survive in in cold environment so it brings about that now all the, the the environment can be occupied by uh different kinds of people yes if you can't survive then it means that you have to migrate to the the area which you can survive or where you can compete better if you can't then you you die you 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 are wiped out so the importance of meiosis it is to bring about um variation so that now there is there is there is uh survival of these organisms in the population so it is a great importance there because it creates genetic diversity in the population hence difference in the survival of the organisms in the environment so basically that's what i say that it brings about what you call survival from there let's look at uh what we call the the, the non-disjunction the consequences non-disjunction and the consequences when you talk about non-disjunction you need to know where does it occur which phase we need to know the phase the phase where does non-disjunction occur so it occurs in in anaphase it can be anaphase one or it can be anaphase two and then what is the importance of this non-disjunction oh does non-disjunction has any importance or it has the negative effect on organisms so that is what you are supposed to cover in there so we are saying that non-disjunction each nucleus should contain 23 chromosomes you have to know that if it is a human cell this is a human cell that each nucleus must contain 23 chromosomes after meiosis but if now uh, non-disjunction occurs it means that uh, if the chromosomes fail fail to separate to separate if uh, chromosomes fail to separate that's what you call the non-disjunction uh, during anaphase if the chromosomes fail to separate then it means that this number of 23 will not be brought about so one nucleus so now what happens in non-disjunction yes okay saying that you have um, a cell a cell under metaphase meta metaphase metaphase one and then now this cell has uh, chromosomes remember they are supposed to be aligned along the equator you see we are explaining the process of non-disjunction they're supposed to be aligned along the equator now in actual sense in the normal cell if it is normal yes uh, we expect it to be like in anaphase in anaphase in anaphase i expect it to have uh these chromosomes separating these chromosomes separating you see these chromosomes must separate you see they are separating and then in telophase i expect this cell to form two cells to form two cells whereby these two cells they have two chromosomes you understand so if it is a normal cell i expect it to be 46 um now this one is also 46 after at the end of uh telophase one telophase telophase one i expect to be 23 and even so this one 23 but if non-disjunction occurs if non-disjunction uh uh disjunction occurs what happens metaphase the chromosomes yes they will be fine like that in metaphase they will do what they will be fine yes and then when they go to anaphase now we because we said it fails to separate during anaphase yes these ones are 46 if uh, it's a human cell then automatically is going to be now what's going to happen is going to happen 
that the whole set the whole this the, this this whole set is going to go to one side the spindle fiber are going to fail to to contract from this other side you understand and then it pulls this one also pulls this one but this one is going to go on one side you see it's going to go on to one side now this is going to result in a cell having yes one two and then three one two and then three and then the other one is going to have only one chromosome you understand so now it means that this one is going to have an extra extra chromosome this one is going to have an extra extra chromosome yes and then this one is going to have short is going to be less of one one chromosome so it's going to have an extra chromosome this one's going to be less of one chromosome so now if this one is still 46 now this one is supposed to be 23 but it has an extra therefore it's going to be 24 and then this one is supposed to be 23 but now it has is short of one chromosome it's supposed to have two chromosomes now it has three it has one extra and then this one is supposed to have two but now it is having one it means that it's short of one chromosome if we go back to a human cell it's supposed to be 23 then it means that it's going to have 22. so now what happens so because now uh, uh it, it has an x it has three three chromosomes then in science we're going to call it trisome try try we call it zone because it is a cell the body which describes a cell which has uh three chromosomes of the same kind uh on the uh, three chromosomes of the what of the same of the same kind then now here is gonna be because this one is gonna be mono mono because it's a, it's a cell a uh, body then you're gonna call it zone so it's gonna call it monosome if this non disjunction occurs on chromosome number 21 then we're gonna call it uh trisome trisome 21 we're gonna call it trisome 21 now what happens what happens if this cell which has 24 chromosome the trisome the trisome 21 trisome 21 if it fertilizes a normal gamete for example this is a sperm and then fertilizes a normal gamete which is the ovum yes ovum then automatically what we're gonna have is we're gonna have a normal ovum remember it has a normal cell it's gonna have 23 so now it's gonna have uh 24 and 23 then you're gonna have 47 remember a normal person is supposed to have 46 now instead of 46 it's gonna have 20 uh 40 sorry 47 so it means that now this condition because of an, a, a normal uh, cell fertilizing uh, the cell which has an extra chromosome on chromosome number 21 is going to result in what you call uh, down uh, syndrome syndrome is going to result in what you call down syndrome that's how down syndrome is being brought about however we can also have a situation because we say that uh this cell is having 22 instead of 23 so now if um if 22 if 22 ne, uh, fertilizes the one which is 23 yes now it means that uh, it's gonna have 45 instead of 46 still this is also an abnormal uh, individual so a monosome, if it, it fertilizes um, a normal cell, is going to become uh, 45. And then a trisome, if fertilizes the normal cell, is going to form 47. All this results in abnormality uh, in an individual. So uh, that's what we are trying to explain. So now when we say that, um, one nucleus of, uh, when that's just non disjunction occurs, as we say that, one nucleus contain, will contain 22 chromosomes. We have seen how, where do we get the 22 chromosome. It fails to separate and then uh, one nucleus is going to have uh, 22 chromosomes instead of, instead of 23, while the other ones will have 24 instead of 23. It means that this one is a monosome and then this is a trisome. It is less of one chromosome, it has an extra of chromosome. When either of this resulting gamete fuses with the normal gamete normal gamete is 23. so now if um uh this fertilizes this uh 24 and 23 is going to be 
47. 22 and 23 is going to be 20, uh, 45. That's why they're saying that result in 45 or 47 chromosome instead of 46, which is 23 plus 22, you get 45. We have explained that. And 20, uh, 23 and 24, you get 47 instead of what? 46. 23 plus 23. So this is this will lead to a child having what you call Down syndrome. Down syndrome. And then the child will have for his, uh, five autosomes with three uh, chromosome number 21. It means that chromosome number 21 is going to be three of them. That's why we call it trisome. That cell is called a trisome because they have three chromosome number of the same kind instead of uh, a normal pair and one pair of sex chromosome. So sex chromosome. So if they are 25 plus the sex chromosome, which is X and Y or X and X based on which gender is it, then it's going to become 47. And then the women over the age of 40 I have a great chance of having children uh, with Down syndrome. We're not saying that uh, children, uh, all the people who are 40 years and above, they're going to produce kids who are having Down syndrome complications. No, we are saying that the people who are 40 years and above, they have a great chance of having this mutation, have a great chance of having a baby with down syndrome i think you have ever seen people with the down syndrome you have ever seen them so what are some of the 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 the, 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 the characteristics you can, of of people having down syndrome stocky body the body is stocky uh flattened face with a small and broad nose small skin yeah you you you, you have ever seen these people uh, let's look at a picture which has for down syndrome here so uh, the folds uh, in the inner corner of the eyes that appear to be slant upwards. And then um, a large tongue. These kids, they have large tongue. Actually, the tongue is always protruding out. Yes, with the small eyes. Actually, the eyes are, 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 are tilted. Yes. And then you're saying that the broad hands, the hands are big and short. They're actually, the fingers, né? they are big and short. Né? They are broad. Yeah, big and short and then you're saying that uh wide space between the first and the second toe if you check the uh, you may not see the the, the 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 kid because of the shoes but if you get a chance uh this kid to remove the shoes you can see exactly what is happening yes so now let, well, let's look at it. some of the difference between meiosis one and meiosis two here we say that we explain this that if you want to know the differences between meiosis one and meiosis two just look at the phases prophase what happens in prophase there is no crossing over there is crossing over there is in, in my mera phase uh chromosomes align along the equator randomly in homologous pair chromosome line along the equator singly so and then anaphase chromo homologous chromosome separate opposite poles while the other one chromatid separate yeah uh, telophase you form two chromosomes sorry two cells the other ones you form four cells crossing over occurs in prophase there is no crossing over so you have to look at the phases okay chromosome align along the equator in the homologous pair you see the word homologous in the homologous this is the key point in the homologous pair then the other side the chromosomes align along the equator individually this is the key point which 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 um differentiate them then they are saying that the chromosomes move to opposite poles they move to opposite poles they are not saying they're saying chromosomes it means that uh the way chromatids now sorry homologous chromosomes so the chromosomes now they move to opposite pole what moves to opposite poles in terms of uh meiosis too is the chromatids chromatids uh, move to opposite to opposite poles. Yeah, uh, why do we call them Dora chromosomes? They have not yet uh, developed to form real chromosomes. That's why we call them Dora chromosomes. But we prefer saying uh, chromatids. Two cells from uh two cells form at the end. So we say that here you form two cells, while the other side you form four cells. You see the key point? Yes. And then our chromosomes number in in meiosis one is halved. Chromosome you have the halving. Here you have the halving effect. You can't see because of the color. <laughs> and then this side, uh, the chromosome number is maintained. It means that you start with 23 and then you end up with 23. Yes. Then uh, crossing over takes place. We say that there is crossing over. While the other side, there is no crossing over. 
there is no crossing over basically those are some of the differences between meiosis what about the similarities do they have uh, do we have some similarities between meiosis and mitosis yes obvious there are some uh, similarities what are some of the similarities both process involve division in meiosis one you have what called a cytokinesis even in mitosis you have what called cyto cyto cytokinesis division of uh, division of the nucleus so in both cells you have a uh, new uh, you have cell division it means that new cells are formed however in meiosis you form four cells and then in mitosis you form two cells which are identical both process occurs in m phase m phase is the phase whereby the the, the cell starts to divide the, 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 the cycle is divided ne? is divided into m phase you have uh, the, the the g phase one uh, the s phase and then the g phase two this all this is interface interface that's why you call we call that this is not a part of meiosis and i can call this uh growth uh sorry growth phase growth one synthesis growth two and then this is uh where there is uh division the real division which is taking place actually it it, it takes around 80 minutes minutes for it to 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 to, to happen while well, this one takes around the, uh the remaining from 24 hours that's how what it takes yes all right uh, in both cell cycle the stage are common you have metaphase perophase anaphase and telophase both in meiosis and in it uh, in 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 uh mitosis there is synthesis of dna both you find the synthesis of dna in interface you see here in the in the s phase which you call synthesis that's where you find the organelles and dna are being synthesized from cytokinesis division the vision of the of the cyto cytoplasm yes cytokinesis occurs in the two cells what about the differences between mitosis and meiosis difference between mitosis and meiosis okay uh here we see that it occurs is in the cell body uh which you call the somatic cells well this one occurs uh, in ovaries and testes resulting in, in gametes production of genetically identical these ones are identical identical well these ones are genetically different they are genetically different this one results in two daughter cells uh well this one results in four daughter cells these cells must undergo maturation interface so that they can mature so that they form what you call real cells. We call them daughter cells because they are still young. Then you have one nuclear division. We don't have mitosis one and mitosis two, no. So it means that the nucleus divides once. That's why we say one nuclear, one nuclear. Well, here we have two nuclear division. Uh, here we have a uh, crossing over takes place in prophase one. Well, here crossing over takes place. There's no, uh, there is no crossing over in, in prophase one. That's why they're always uh, identical. Well, in meiosis, there is crossing over which takes place in prophase one. Then here we say that it results in uh, daughter cells being uh, deployed. You start with the deployed, you start with the deployed to N, you end with deployed to N. Well, here you start with the deployed to N, and then you end with a uh, haploid, one N, you see? Yes. Then here results in the somatic cells, well, this one results in the gametes. So basically, uh, those are the differences between meiosis and mitosis. So now let's look at, so I think our next class, let's it be uh, reproduction. Reproduction, we're going to look at the reproduction. I know that many people like this topic. And then even in my, uh, sorry, even in our new YouTube channel for Bright Doctor, we were going to also discussing too much of reproduction. Yes. Check the link below. Don't forget to subscribe and like and also share to others so that they can also benefit from our, our classes. Thank you very much. See you again.